It has been a big week for the so-called doomsday cult mom, Lori Vallow Daybell. She was back in an Idaho courtroom today for a motions hearing before her upcoming trial in January. And a new true crime series about Lori premiered on Netflix yesterday. The three-part documentary entitled Sins of Our Mother takes a deep dive into Lori's life before and after Chad Daybell. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. We did have a wonderful family before this happened. Oh, hello. My mom has spent her whole life protecting us kids. Because your mom is very important to me and a good wife. Honestly, Lori and Charles looked like they had the ideal marriage, but her beliefs had become a lot more extreme. After she met Chad Daybell, she changed. Who the hell is Chad Daybell? Joining me now, special guest in Los Angeles, California, the director of Abducted in Plain Sight, The Girl in the Picture, and now Sins of Our Mother, uh, Netflix documentary, Sky Borgman with us tonight. Sky, let me tell you, first of all, when the folks here at Court TV found out that you were coming on tonight, there was like a what kind of reaction. So um, you're already a superstar, rock star here, and it, I'm sure uh, all true crime fans around the country. Let me ask you this, though, about this this story, this documentary. When was the first time that you heard about Lori Vallow Daybell? I mean, it was from Nate Eaton with East Idaho News and his reporting. We had come in contact after abducted in plain sight, and so I followed him on Twitter and I saw his news recordings, or newscasts about this, and and I was just like, what is going on? And it was so strange and confusing and the rationale behind where these kids may have been was just such a bizarre thing that I heard and I really wanted to kind of know what was going on and I'm always attracted to stories that really confuse me and this was a story that went on and on and on it wasn't becoming clearer it was becoming more and more confusing and so we started all these conversations with Netflix and with Lightbox and and it got to the point where we really thought that this was a story that that could use a series and especially a documentary series to try to unravel Lori Vallow a little bit and to try to get some perspective from family members and people who knew her the most and to see was this something did she just break was there one incident in her life that just broke her or was this something where it was a gradual decline and while I'm not entirely sure that we can answer that question exactly I do feel like the documentary series does a pretty good job of of digging a little bit deeper into who she is and really looking at the family that surrounds her honoring JJ and Tylee and getting some perspective on who she was growing up for Colby Ryan her son throughout the course of when they disappeared, what was going on with him and with others while they were looking for those kids. I am so glad that you did this because, you know, we've been covering this story and we were in the same boat as you trying to figure it out for months, like what is going on? And, you know, we're doing the show every single night, so we try to do the best that we can. And I think we do a good job covering uh, what's happening, but to take that dive into the world. so. How would you describe Lori's family? Lori's family is complicated. Um, I, think, I think they're like many families who are in the same situation where they're grappling to try to understand how this happened. But I also think that, especially for, for Janice and for her sister, I think there was a lot of denial. I think there still may be a lot of denial. And I think they're really waiting for the trial to happen so that they can put that denial to rest, even though there's part of me that thinks maybe they'll continue with that. Um, I know with Colby, he's really grappling with it. Um, once Tylee and JJ, once their remains were found, he he was able to sort of take a step and, and have a greater understanding of Lori and who she was. And he was, he was able to kind of, I don't know, turn a corner, I think, and understand that she had a hand in the murder of his brother and his sister but before that i think he was also held some hope i think i think it's a really human emotion actually to sort of have hope that these kids are going to be found i mean the whole world i think was harboring some kind of hope that they were hidden away somewhere um and when their bodies were found i think that that hope disappeared and we had to really come to to a reckoning 
You know, there's another relationship, and, and, and I'm not sure how much you were able to get into it because he's not alive anymore, but Lori and she has a couple of, uh, she has siblings, but one in particular was a big part of all this, Alex Cox, uh, her brother. Were you able to learn anything about the nature of their relationship, either when they were younger, growing up, through the years? I mean, it certainly got to the point where when we found out that Alex Cox had tased Joe Ryan, who was a prior husband of Lori's, that that Alex sort of became her her go-to guy to take care of some problems. And he he loved Tylee, and there were allegations of sexual abuse towards Tylee, and so he wanted to take care of that situation. And it seemed like that's the relationship that was cemented kind of right there, and that relationship continued on and on and on. When we first started researching the documentary, we didn't have text messages and we didn't have any of the exchanges between Alex and Lori and Adam. And once Arizona released some of those documentations, we were able to put a lot more of the pieces together and and really look at the motivations and and how they had that this was no accident, that it had been planned, that Alex was going to show up at that house and take care of something. Wow. Hey, it, it's unreal um, when you think about all the people whose lives have been lost and taken and died. I mean, Alex Cox is dead too. I mean, every death I, I look at that is somehow related to the people here, I take with a grain of salt. You say it's natural causes. I say, oh, yeah, okay, it looks like natural causes, but I think I got to look a little closer. I think I give it a second and a, and a third look. Was there anything? Um, that really kind of took you by surprise as you were going through all of this? I mean, everything. <laughs> everything took me by surprise, I think, as we're going through it. You know, it's such an unbelievable story. And I really responded so much to how many times I felt like it could have been ended. That, look, Kay and Larry were loud about this from the very beginning. And it's almost as if they weren't really listened to. And there were so many opportunities along the way for something to happen in order for those kids to still be alive. And so I think that's the most, one of the most shocking things to me is just at every twist and turn that happens, so if it had gone just in some different direction, if somebody had listened who could have stopped it, or if somebody had tried to stop it beyond Kay and Larry, they were talking, Charles was talking, but it just didn't happen. And that's, I, I don't know if it's shocking to me. It's just incredibly sad. I know what I'm doing this weekend. So uh, in a couple lines, we only have a few seconds here. Um, uh, what am I preparing for this weekend? What's, what's, what, what am I going to experience watching this? I mean, it's a roller coaster ride for sure. It's, it's looking at this case over the past two years from a very human perspective. We talked to Colby Ryan. We talked to Lori's family members. We talked to a lot of her friends. And... We lay out all of the facts as we know them, and we look at how the people around Lori are affected in such a massive way. Sky Borgman, director, Sins of Our Mother, Netflix documentary. I know the folks watching now are all getting ready to watch it if they haven't seen it already. Thanks so much, Sky. Great to see you. Thanks, Vinny. You too.